industrial building for the city of Leavenworth. And also to provide you an opportunity since it's a work session to ask questions at any time. So feel free to interrupt uh, the process as we go through. Uh, start with some background so you kind of get a bearings to where we're at and why we're here. Uh, back in March of this particular year, the Port Authority uh, appointed a committee of five individuals to research and report back to the board the feasibility of building an industrial spec building somewhere within Leavenworth County. So the outcomes of this study session and those of our other cities that we've met with will be, is part of that research process that the building committee is going through. Uh, we understand that we are motivated by the fact that we have the resources to maybe do one project at a time. We can't do multiple projects. That creates a problem. We got four cities, one project at a time. Doesn't mean we can't get to all four cities, it just means we can't do them all four at the same time. So the, the uh, plan of action is to collect the outcomes from each of the study sessions, combine them with other, all of our other research, and make a recommendation to the Port Authority Board somewhere around the end of the year this year. As, as far as a site selection and a community in which we're going to build a building. Some of the questions everybody asks when they say a building is very common questions. Well, Dan, how big is it going to be? How much is it going to cost? What's it going to look like? Where is it going to be located? Who are you going to market to? All good questions. And quite honestly, we're not taking anything off the table as we design this. We understand that if the only thing we had to worry about was square footage, we'd all be building million square foot buildings someplace in our communities and be doing multiples. But that's not the only component. When you figure your cost is $110 a foot, a million square feet, you know, it's, it's a pretty good sized chunk of money. So realistically, the Port Authority has the capacity, in my opinion, in my opinion only, I'm only one board member, we have the capacity to do one 10,000 square foot building by ourselves, if we have to, if that's the direction we go. But our market research that we've accumulated during this process indicates that the 50,000 square foot building is the preferred size. We've brought outside brokers in, outside builders, outside construction companies, uh, realtors in, consulted with them. We've also got research from LCDC and their inquiries that they've had over the last couple of years. And it suggests that the, the targeted building size that would kind of fit the Leavenworth County profile is a 50,000 square foot building. Even that has some challenges and we'll talk about that here as we go forward. But one of the things we're going to do is we'll get your proposal, we'll combine with the others, and the building committee will make a selection. Now, we're not going to make it in isolation. We're going, to, we're going to get your proposal, we're going to talk to you, we're going to talk to the other cities about their proposal. It's going to be a give and take to make sure we're all on the same page together. And then, ultimately, we've got to make a decision. We'll pick one. One of the questions that we have not made a decision on is, do we do one and then repeat the, rebid the process? Or do we do one and after it's done, go to the next one? And if it's done, go to the next one if the city still wants to do it. We don't have an answer to that. I got to put that before my committee to make a decision on that. So we don't know the answer to that particular question uh, in, the, in that particular regard. So this is all a process. We want you to have an opportunity. We see the value in working together with our communities, with the county, with the cities, with the Port Authority. Together, we can do more as a group than any one of us can do individually. I wish that was not the case. I wish we were all independently wealthy and had unlimited resources, but we don't. And the reality is we got to team up together to make this work. And this is where we have had our best successes in the past. Now, once we make a decision, we'll go through a formal process. We'll have to do RFP and RFQs for architects and engineers and for con general contractors and lenders and other parties uh, in, in that particular process. We'll have to go through the city permitting process. We'll have to have site plans prepared, uh, building concept, we'll have to bid it. We have met with all the lenders in Leavenworth County 
to gauge their interest in financially supporting this particular project. And I'm pleased to inform you that they have stepped up to the table and expressed sincere interest in funding up to 80% of the cost of the project. So that makes it a little easier to get into, but it also brings its own level of risk because you've got to pay them interest. Us darn bankers just, you know, we do it with interest. That's just the way it is. We're going to ask you to prepare your own report to submit to the Port Authority. We don't have a format because we recognize that every city is unique, has its own unique characteristics. I was talking with Baser. They have something that you don't have and that's proximity to Wyandotte County. There is going to be more jobs in Wyandotte County in the next 24 months than have been in Leavenworth County for the last 50 years. That's going to open the door for residential development. They don't have any industrial development. But you have something unique that they don't have. You have two industrial parks that you have access to that are paid for, fully developed, shovel ready, ready to go. So every community has something unique to bring to the table. So we're expecting four <coughs> separate, unique proposals from each community. So instead of coming up with some generic form that everybody fills out, we'll just let you do what you do best and present your proposal as you see fit. We're going to ask you in, in, the, in your packet that uh, I had sent out, the, this one. It says submit your proposal by September 30th. Um, that has been universally, uh, uh, how do I want to say this, not accepted. And so, <laughs> uh, so we, uh, we have moved that date to November 15th. So that will give you about 45 days to put a proposal together. We can work with anybody during that period of time. It's your choice. You can do it in-house. You can get support. Whatever we can do to facilitate the process. We'll be glad to help in any way we can. Uh, when you submit your proposal, we want to know what size of building you want. And when you pick a size, there's going to be a financial responsibility to get it done. Yeah, we can borrow 80%, but what about the other 20%? Where's that money going to come from? Then we also got to deal with the realities of what happens if we build the building and, God forbid, it doesn't sell. We're going to have to convert that to payments. We have to do debt service on that. Now, the bankers have basically said we're going to have four years of interest only, which for bankers, that's a big deal that they agreed to that. But I appreciate the community support that they came up with. So for the first four years, it's going to be interest only. The first two years, we're going to include what we call interest carry in the cost of construction. So we'll be borrowing part of the interest. The last two years, we'll have to figure out how to make the installments of, of interest on those loans if it goes that far. We don't think it's going to go that far. We don't want it to go that far, but it could. So we have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. We, uh, we want to, we're interested in knowing what your initial cash investment is going to be for the construction. And keep in mind, I'm sitting here fully aware that your 2022 budget is fully intact and set and ready to go. So that means that the probability of getting any sizable dollars out of the 22 budget is low. We respect that. So your proposal may be that we won't contribute any funds to fiscal year 23 as part of the commitment. Again, nothing is off the table. So whatever fits your circumstances is what fits your circumstances. And so tailor it to fit what is comfortable for you. And we talked about the management of the interest expense during the first two years of construction. Like I say, that's going to be included in the construction cost. We'll advance it against the loan, pay the interest. So there's probably not going to be any cash outlay the first couple of years if, if we do this, as far as interest is concerned, initial. Um, then we talked about the worst case principal and interest after four years. The other thing that you have that some of our communities don't have is you have industrial parks where the land is paid for. So you can include as part of your contribution to the process the land. You're not putting any cash out at that particular point, but we will have to obviously negotiate when we sell the building what kind of return is going to come to you for that particular piece of property. 
but obviously you don't have to come up with the cash, so land is, is an option. The other thing that you have is your shovel ready. So all your utilities to the industrial parks, if that's where you choose to put them, is there. You won't have to put any uh, expense to bring sewer, or water, gas, electric, or any of the other utilities to the site. Now you, may, you don't have to put it in an industrial park if you don't want to. That's on the table. You can do it that way. So if you have some other plans um, that Paul has kept secret and hasn't shared with me, uh, you know, it will be a good time to bring them out. Uh, you know, which budget year you want to, to spend the money, that's up to you. And trust me, if you want to go clear to 2025 before you start, it may take you out of the first building. But if we choose to do one and then do another one, then do the next one and then do the next one, you may be second or third in line. Not because yours isn't the best presentation, it's because you just choose not to fund it until that period of time. Your choice, nothing off the table. Uh, the size of the building, uh, a lot of our research has been based on two platforms, a 10,000 square foot building and a 50,000 square foot building. Uh, but if you want to do 100,000, that's fine. If you want to do a 20,000 or 25,000, that's fine. Again, your choice. You're going to run into the same challenge as we do. You love to have the bigger building because that usually means more jobs, more tax base, but it takes more money to make that all work. And you guys know what your budgets are. You know what your financial resources are. You know what your unencumbered caches are and that type of thing. So uh, we'll let you choose what you want to do. There are some other resources that are going to be available to you, as they will be for every other community. In, and that is the Port Authority is probably going to be able to provide as much as two to three hundred thousand dollars for this process. How much? Again? Two to three hundred thousand. Uh, we are also aware that Leavenworth County has three hundred thousand from the sales tax revenue uh, from the tongue and oxy clawback that could be used depending upon the Leavenworth County Commissioner's approval. So if you choose to incorporate that into your plan, which is okay. You need their approval. You would need to contact your appropriate commissioner and have them go through that particular process uh, for that. We don't have any problem recommending it, but they make the decision, and it would be valuable if you contributed that. So collectively, you know, that could be up to $600,000 that's available to help with the process. Uh, we've talked about the lenders. Uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that they are acceptable to it. We will, like anything else, we will have to put that out for bid. So any, any commitment we have is a soft commitment at this particular point. Uh, so when, when that time comes, we'll have to do an RFP, send it out. They'll have to submit bids for that, and then we'll have to select a lender uh, to do that particular process. Um, in your packet of information, the very last page, is what we call the scorecard. One of the issues that we have to deal with, as we said, is we got four communities and enough money to do one project. So in our best effort, and I will not profess that this is perfect, in our best effort, we tried to put something that everybody's gonna be scored by. Everybody's gonna be compared the same on this. Now keep in mind, I think there's like uh, 80 or 90 points that this comes up with. We're not going to split hairs between an 84 and an 86, or a 72 and a 78. We're going to get those parties together, and we're going to talk about it and try to figure out. If one scores a 20 and one scores an 80, well, the 80 is probably going to get it in that regard. So this is an indicator of what we're going to look at when we are evaluating your request. You can see what the rules of the game are by reviewing the scorecard. Another question that public servants have asked me on every project I've ever done for the Port Authority or LCDC is what's in it for us? <laughs> and that's a good question. And why is it a good question? Because that's what you're going to get asked. Why are we spending our money doing this? And that's a darn good question. And we appreciate that. So if you turn to page four of this, of this handout, uh, the one looks like this. We have two building platforms there, a 10,000 square foot building and a 50,000 square foot building. 
we've guesstimated the number of acres that are be needed for a particular size project. And in the blue bars there, we're assuming that the land is provided free and clear. Now, whether the Port Authority does it or where the City of Leavenworth provides that, it's still contributed. Cash investment for a 10,000 building after the land is contributed is only $103,000. Only. It's still a big number. If you sell that building in a best case scenario, you get your cash investment back, you get your land costs back, and you get what some people would call profit. You know, that's, that's the risk factor that we take. That's best case. Probably what you're going to experience is you'll get your cash investment back and a portion of your land back and you won't get any sales proceeds. And of course, there is a worst case scenario that could happen, you don't get anything back. So we're gonna be realistic about that. You can uh, view over to the right-hand side under the 50,000 square foot building and see what the numbers are there for the 50,000 square foot building. In the bottom half of the chart, we've gone through each for each community, and we said, what would a 10,000 square foot building in the city of Lamb of Worth generate for the city. Now this includes the real estate taxes for the building. This includes the sales tax from payroll, a portion of the payroll of the employees that work in that particular building. It also includes the real estate taxes for some of the personal homes that are owned or rented by the employees of that business. Not all of them will do that. And not all payroll will be, sale, uh, be eligible for sales tax. So it's been discounted. But for the city of Leavenworth, we guesstimate that your return is $13,590 a year. For the 50,000 square foot building, it's 84,427. Then we also took two other looks, because one of the components that you're gonna have is once we get the building built, you'll probably see me or someone from the Port Authority coming in and talking to you and say, we need to provide incentives. I know you've never heard of incentives, never had to provide those or anything, so what's a reasonable number of incentives that you provide? You may not have to provide any, but chances are you're going to. So we took your annual income, put it on a 10-year present value at 3%, and for the 10,000 square foot building, that would produce $115,000 for you, and for the 50,000 square foot building, it would produce $720,000. Those are reasonable boundaries, I'm not saying you have to do it, it's reasonable boundaries that you could justify spending to incent a company to come in and occupy and buy that building. Then we also know that the useful life of these buildings is somewhere around 40 years. So we did the same math, we just did it for 40 years to see what the benefit is to the community in that particular regard. So there are advantages to doing this. The other advantages are as you all know, industry is assessed at 25% versus residential real estate at 11.5%. So for every commercial $1,000, you know, it's the same as almost $2,250 worth of residential real estate development. So you get more bang for your buck. And quite honestly, Leavenworth County, and we don't have it down by the city, but Leavenworth County is very highly dependent on our residential component of our tax base. And we want to get that balance a, a little more on the industrial side. So that's another reason for the push for the industrial development. Now, I've been doing a lot of talking. I'm going to stop. Yeah, I have some questions. <laughs> and let you ask your questions. Okay, where did you come up with the ten and 50000 Are those like the most common requested when you looked at this ten and 50000 50, Well, we, that's a good question. Um, we started out with 10000 because that's what the Port Authority has the financial capacity to do in and okay. of by themselves. It is also historically what we've done. We, in our history of the Port that's Authority, we've done three buildings. All three of them were 10,000 square foot buildings. Uh, for those of you that have been here for a while, you may remember Gary Carlson, uh, the namesake of one of our industrial parks. He was uh, executive director for LAD at that particular point, what we now call LCDC. When he passed away, the building program died with him. And this is a rejuvenation, and so we're building on those successes. So that's where we started. 
we started researching and the research suggested 50 to 100,000 square foot buildings is the most likable size and the most target rich environment for our particular size community. We shied away from the 100,000 square foot building because of the cost. We just felt it was too aggressive uh, particularly for right out of the chute to do a 100,000 square foot building. We, I personally think 50,000 is, is a little bit of a push, but doable. And so the committee's preference is 50,000 square foot for those particular reasons. Are you seeing in other communities uh, demand for spec building? As, as opposed to custom build? We... Uh, well, that's kind of a unique question. Um, if you go out to the Woodlands Racetrack, there are yeah. four one million square foot warehouses. Well, I can see that. All four yeah. of those are spec. Okay. Two of them are occupied by, are gonna be occupied by Amazon as one of their tenants, the other two are still spec. Yeah. You go to the Turner Triangle, and all those buildings there are spec. Okay. Uh, Urban Outfitters is a build job, but they're by the Woodlands, that's mm -hmm. 2,000 jobs. Yeah. Um, the uh, uh, Old Dominion Truck Company down there by Bonner Springs, and you go across the highway on the left-hand side, they're moving all that dirt down there and starting to build. That's Old Dominion Trucking Company. Uh, that's a build job and that type of thing. Uh, a lot of our communities are building, particularly in the Johnson County market, are building a lot of spec buildings. And they, they may build a 100,000 square foot building and break it into four 25,000 square foot units, and that and which could be one of your designs if you wanted to do something like that. We have other communities where the uh, land is subordinated to the city with the idea that when the building sells, the land gets paid for at that particular time. We've seen that done. So yes, there is other spec buildings uh, that we're competing against, and that makes our job a little bit more difficult, but we're willing to rise to the occasion. We've had some pretty good successes in Leavenworth County in this fiscal year. Fiscal year, We've had uh, four, five, six, six major buildings added to the Leavenworth County tax rolls in the last year, year and a half, the largest of which is the Hills Pet Nutrition uh, that was done down in Tonganoxy. We've had several others in the Urban Hess. Uh, we've had the 21st, uh, 21st Century Management Inc. or MAPS building that's right. being done in the Gary Carlson Industrial Park. It's under construction right now. Uh, so we, we've had some pretty good successes throughout the county and the momentum is running in our favor. around in the various cities? Are we your first presentation, or have you presented to some other cities at this point? I'll probably get in trouble for saying this, but I always save the best for last. <laughs> so, so you're, you're the last one that we've done. I don't really have a question. I, I would like to comment that I, I think the process that you're following is excellent with respect to the uh, stakeholders, with respect to kind of the central guidance, but be, cities being able to kind of decentralize in terms of how they're going to respond, and then you having a scoring sheet that you know will take that into consideration. Uh, sounds like it's at least the initial scoring sheet to get you know to get to see which options are best. But there'll be other factors maybe that go into you know making the selection. But so I think holistically, it is a very very good process. I really appreciate you coming to talk talk with us and um, thank you. Thank you. No, Appreciate you coming. Uh, if, if today was the day you start building at the mortgage, what would be the interest rates that you think you'd have today? Uh, oh, boy. I'm just wild guess. Probably in the mid threes. That high? It, it's gone up well, over three now? Prime's at three and a quarter okay. today, so it'd probably be some fraction above prime. Okay, and uh, what would What's the mortgage length? Uh, 20 year, 30 year, 40 year? What are the banks talking? Our lenders in town. Well, first of all, you'll have a two year construction period. Right. And then they've agreed uh, in concept to two more years of interest only. Correct. 
And then it'd be a 15 year, year 15 receipt. year note yes. after four years. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you for one, coming. Appreciate one last it. shout out to Paul and Camilla. Camilla, excuse me. <laughs> Get it right eventually. Both of these serve on the building committee and have provided countless resource and advice and suggestions. Uh, I was telling uh, Mike that we do not have a roadmap that we follow. I wish we did. It would make this job a lot easier. You need Gary Carlson here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Gary Carlson was here. Uh, yeah, if Gary Carlson's here, we'd have two buildings going in the air and a third one getting ready to go. So. Uh, but uh, uh, this has been a tedious process. We've been working on it diligently uh, hard on since March, yeah. and uh, we've got good input, and, and I appreciate the efforts and the support that we get from these two individuals. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, yeah. Cam. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. John, That's all I got. Thank all right. Thank you, you for Thanks, coming. Dan. You're welcome. Good presentation. Thank you. Yeah. item on the agenda. Yeah, you can stay. <laughs> you just won't have a mic. You're, you're sitting at the kids' table. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to, you'll have to borrow, you'll have to borrow Carla's, <laughs> Carla's mic if you want to talk. Look okay. Carla. Next item on the agenda is special meeting, and I need to motion to open the special meeting. So moved. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting. Commissioner Preisinger. Aye. 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 All right. We're open. Consider a three-party agreement between the city, KDOT, and Brungart, Hanamuchi, and Company for KDOT K7 Fourth Street Improvement Project. Yes, sir. Yeah, Madam Mayor and Commission, I'll start briefly and then turn it over to our Public Works Director. Uh, the reason for the special meeting tonight is to keep this project moving. Um, it's been a little bit slower than we've liked. There's been some issues with uh, some state workers uh, working from home and our, our ability to facilitate this. So we wanted to keep it keep it going tonight. We also wanted at the study session setting to let this breathe a little bit, to let um, uh, our consultant that we've selected but not yet signed on with uh, to talk about approach to the project um, and to really start the conversation of this uh, extremely important project. So I'm going to turn it over to our Public Works Director, Brian Faust, to, to take the lead on the item. Uh, good evening. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, the item this evening is to consider authorizing city staff to work with Brumgart, Hanna Michael and Company, to BHC, uh, and KDOT on a three-party agreement for the 4th Street improvements. Uh, this project is part of the City Connecting Link Improvement Program. The City Connecting Link program is a cost share program uh, with KDOT covering 85% of eligible costs while the city covers the remaining 15%. On this project, the maximum KDOT contribution will be $1 million. And costs that are not eligible include acquisition of rights of way and utility relocation. While the section between Delaware and Seneca were not selected as part of the program, uh, the city did request these additional two blocks be included in the overall project limits. And KDOT agreed, and the city and KDOT previously assigned an agreement that changed the project limits from Choctaw to Delaware to Choctaw to Seneca. Uh, the city did use qualification-based selection uh, and followed KDOT requirements to select the design consultant. Uh, the city posted a request for qualification and received five submittals. Uh, the five submittals were evaluated by our review committee following established KDOT procedures, and the top two firms were interviewed. Uh, the interviews included discussions on a wide range of options, uh, possible lane reductions from four to three, uh, upgrades to traffic signals and pedestrian access, and public engagement to help ensure shape improvements um, to accentuate the history of our downtown. Based on the final ranking, BHC uh, was identified as our top firm. Uh, city staff has worked with BHC to negotiate a detailed scope of services, which is attached, along with an estimated engineering fee for this work. Uh, this information has been provided to KDOT, and KDOT is in agreement. Um, tonight, we have Randy Gordon with BHC here. Uh, to do a short presentation on the project. Thank you. 
Great. Thanks, Brian. Am I talking loud enough for everybody? Yeah. All right. Generator won't give up for sure. All right. Let me go ahead and pull up the presentation. So what I've got is, uh, first of all, uh, fair disclosure. Um, for our project, what was um, intended for our project team um, is our project manager is David Smalling. I actually lead our public works group at BHC. David, however, is on vacation this week, just so turned out. Um, so I'm going to be covering the same information. But David will be the, the daily point of contact with Mike Stefan, your project manager. So, uh, so really, I'd like to just give you a very brief overview of kind of the lead parts, main parts of our design team. This was all covered in the uh, interview presentation with city staff. Um, again, some of what we saw about today's downtown that I think this is an opportunity for you to think about addressing moving forward and maybe as part of a, uh, identifying any bigger um, initiatives you think may be appropriate. Um, dive a little bit more into certainly what we brought up during the interview as we saw those opportunities might be, at least certainly we would present for you for consideration. And then um, some other ways that maybe you can enhance downtown beyond what it already is today. And then certainly any questions that you might have. BHC, Brungert, Hanna Michael and Company. Um, we've actually done prior work for the city of Leavenworth in the past. We did um, actually two years of si sidewalk projects back in 2009. They all got combined to kind of uh, catch up. Um, we've also done truck route study for the city, evaluating 2nd, 3rd, 4th Street here. And then uh, did a drainage project a couple years ago to help staff identify some solutions. Um, we have done um, several different downtown type projects. So we certainly feel like we understand some of the challenges that come with an existing urban area um, and some solutions we've come up with, including some of the very specific opportunities I think you at least need to think about here on 4th Street. Um, we also include RDG Design. Um, we have collaborated with them on a number of past and current projects. They have some very strong chops when it comes to urban design, um, walkability as well as bikeability. Um, there's a few of their downtown projects, but they've also done work for Overland Park, Topeka, Dodge City, Fort Scott, and a lot of other Kansas communities. So they're a very strong regional, Midwest regional partner for us. That's why we like to work with them. They have some very sharp people. Um, so again, when we look at downtown, and for some of us, we've been driving through Leavenworth for decades, but um, also with fresh perspective, looking at what the um, original funds from KDOT were, you know, applied for. And that is certainly that you have pavement, that's time, it's time for it to be uh, rejuvenated. But we also see some other things that when you're starting to spend money, capital amounts of money, there's other questions that I think are fair to ask the city, um, whether perhaps there's some changes you might entertain making. You have four 10-foot lanes right now. There's no center turn lanes. Those, those through lanes are also turn lanes whenever cars need to turn left or right. Um, the other thing is the way the traffic signals are currently running, they're on a timer. They don't change their behavior and their timing pattern depending on levels of traffic. So um, it can't adapt to certain conditions very easily. Staff has to manually change them. Um, that can be very efficient because you don't have to mess with them a lot. However, again, they don't adapt very well and there's some inefficiencies that come into play. Um, we've dealt with a little bit of that in the past with some of the uh, truck route study work we've done and then some follow-up work actually for Geiger Concrete. Um, also just in the downtown there's some elements that there's some accessibility uh, limitations. Doesn't mean the businesses and the buildings are not compliant with ADA but what it may mean is that if you'd like to get into that business and your mobility challenge you may have to go around to a side or a rear entrance which isn't always welcoming as it could be and so I think that might create some opportunities if you're also investing along 4th Street. We also certainly want to recognize the historic character of downtown. You've invested 
in the last a uh, little over a decade, quite a bit, in trying to um, really be more appealing to visitors and the businesses. So there's no reason not to continue to reinvest in downtown and look and see how 4th Street might embrace some of the same um, upgrades that you did prior um, and also tie it together. Uh, there's also a question, you may be able to create more gathering spaces where you feel they're appropriate um, to facilitate after hours events, weekend special events, things like that. But those things that draw more visitors to downtown, um, to enjoy downtown, spend money here, certainly benefit the local businesses. So again, when we look at that, these were some of the things that we thought were certainly kind of the leading topics for a discussion with the city. Safety for one, and again, four narrow lanes um, and no turn lanes um, can be a bit of a safety issue with rear end accidents, things like that. We certainly want to evaluate the history, what kind of crashes you have, um, and then look at ways we might be able to mitigate and make things a little bit safer. Um, but it also means there may be ways to actually also um, make traffic movement more efficient, even if we're talking about fewer lanes. Um, and I'll get to that in a second. And then again, you've got 60 feet of right of way, and right now 40 feet of that is pavement for cars. Is that the right balance? That leaves 20 feet for everything else in right of way. Maybe you can take 10 feet of that or six feet of that and do something that you find has another benefit to the community. And then, um, again, there's some opportunities, I think, to improve accessibility and, and some of the appeal um, sort of across the board um, to encourage visitors. So this is a graphic, what we show. The top photo is, is today, 4th Street. Um, again, those four lanes, but the inside lanes have to function as left turn lanes whenever somebody needs to make a left turn. So at times, you only have one lane in each direction that might be available for traffic. Um, creates backups, also surprises. Um, the 10-foot lanes are a, a mixed bag in terms of uh, it's uncomfortable right and and it reduces the margin of error for motorists and bicyclists and everyone else in that space I will say that the upside to narrow lanes is it slows traffic down you have a low posted speed limit downtown if that's what you desire I will tell you very narrow lanes is one way to reinforce that behavior in drivers um, so you, we do have to balance that but there's other things that we might be able to incorporate into this project to again encourage drivers to drive slower while maybe providing a better margin of error. Uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. Well, so with the road diet, so uh, last traffic numbers that we would rely on as valid are about 15,000 cars a day travel the section of 4th Street. Um, we have done a number of other projects with very similar streets that are four lanes. They have about 15 or 16,000 cars a day um, that we've looked at narrowing the street and, and going from four lanes to three. And so that's the photo below. Um, we just did this in downtown Shawnee. It opened uh, last year. Neiman Road um, runs right by City Hall. Uh, but it was a four lane, no turn lane street. Um, there was a great deal of concern about okay, when we take away a lane, what are we going to do to traffic? And I'll, I'll address that in a second. But what Shawnee and Grandview and several other cities we've been involved with see is, well, if I don't really need four lanes, I can get by with three just fine. I suddenly have this extra space that I can use along that route for uh, whether it's just to be more comfortable as a pedestrian, maybe it's to put some amenities, maybe it's to, to have a small park that makes it feel much more comfortable and much more pedestrian scale um, and it also narrows the the distance to cross the street if you're a pedestrian um, going from one side to the other sure What has to be considered too is we have a lot of historical buildings and it has to whatever is done more shock absorbing because with the truck route it's deteriorating or making the buildings you know crumble inside okay. so I don't know 
you know, if you realize that was a truck rental? So actually, we, we have some of this information, to be honest, we had the advantage of having done some prior study in 2016 yeah. okay. to evaluate options for how you want to do a truck route downtown. And actually, in that study, we identified a road diet for 4th Street as an opportunity for the city if, if it, you thought it fit the character of downtown and also your traffic patterns. Um, so, yeah, right now... Um, 6% of the 15,000 or so vehicles a day um, with 4th Street as a truck route, about 6% of those were identified as trucks, heavy vehicles. Um, in our 2016 study, we looked at, at alternate routes being designated for truck route 2nd Street, 3rd Street primarily, in which case 1.5% might be heavy trucks of 15,000 or so at that point. So uh, you're right. That's also a fundamental question for 4th Street. Is that the truck route you'd like? And it's possible. You put a road diet, this might feel more comfortable for trucks, right? If you run a truck, a 9-foot wide truck down a 10-foot lane, no one's going to be comfortable. Um, but if we have an 11-foot lane with a center turn lane, that may feel significantly more comfortable for the community. And so we can help you try and weigh those options moving forward. So road diet, again, um, these have become um, a fairly common choice that cities have made, especially cities like yours, right? You've, I mean, Leavenworth's been around a long time. You've, you've experienced a lot of growth. You've adapted your infrastructure. You've upgraded it where you, you felt you needed to, but things change. And so um, it's fair to reevaluate what the new Leavenworth, the new norm, right, is best served by in terms of infrastructure. So we find that um, really anything up to about 18,000 cars a day, we can sometimes push that to 20,000 vehicles a day, a three-lane road, you know, one lane in each direction, and then a center left turn lane um, will work just as well as a four-lane route like you have now. And a lot of what tells you what's the real limit comes down to how many driveways do you have within each block and how many people really want to turn left. A lot of times that's what really kind of caps things. But 4th Street as it exists today is very much a candidate for a road diet. Um, some of the benefits, right, we can reduce some of the crash types um, because we can give turning vehicles a place to get out of the way. It's a little less of a, of a surprise. It also narrows the crossing distance for pedestrians, um, which certainly is a benefit both to the pedestrian and to the motorist. Um, it also creates unique opportunities to enhance downtown and do traffic calming and some other things that you may feel are going to be really beneficial to Leavenworth. So this, uh, this is actually our Shawnee project, but we've done this on pretty much every single road diet we've ever discussed because there is a uh, visceral worry that I've taken away 25% of the roadway capacity when I take go from four lanes to three. And that's understandable to go, how can that be better? So typically what we've done in the past is we will go ahead and do uh, traffic simulations. We'll go out and count the existing number of cars each day, peak hour times, which direction they're going, where they're turning, things like that. And we'll actually run a simulation and validate it just to make sure that it's, um, see if this will run on screen. I apologize. It doesn't look like it wants to run. So we can generate movies. I mean, they're computer simulations of the vehicles based on actual performance. Um, and we'll make sure it shows today. And we can generally show at intersections, cars stack up five or six deep, right, rush hour. And then we'll use that same data, and we'll model this instead of four lane, like you have now, we'll model it as a three lane and all the same turning cars, the car movements, um, things like that. And we can do a pretty good job of trying to compare and contrast, right? What, what is faster, what is slower, um, what is the same? Um, and especially when you get traffic signals in the mix, we can also evaluate the way the signal timing patterns are now, which is basically just kind of fixed. But we can also look at it, well, if you allowed for detection, in which case, so 
they north south traffic on fourth street stays green until a car pulls up on a side street then it'll trigger a signal they'll get a chance to cross go back to green and i don't know i'm gonna guess maybe you've st stopped at fourth waiting for an imaginary car to cross on a side street wondered why do i have to wait here right this is this is a way to to get people so they understand a little bit more intuitively why the signals turned and not just why did they program it that way. Um, so the, that feed, feeds into a lot of the public engagement that comes into these kind of projects because what we're asking people to do is try to understand what would be not different than it is today, right? Both you as the governing body have to be uh, committed to any changes. Staff has to be very comfortable to try to explain that and implement it. And so our job as a consultant is to try and find ways to um, provide explanations as much as we can and, and set reasonable expectations for everyone as to what it will be when you're done. Um, for us, social media posts, right, that's become the new and pretty inexpensive way to push information out. Um, whether that's just quick facts or meeting coming up or um, to solicit feedback. We can do a corridor newsletter or fact sheets or FAQs. It all depends on um, what you feel like the channels of information you need to share and uh, address within the community. Um, on projects where we're looking at acquiring right of way or making radical changes um, or we have significant questions about what, it, what happens to uh, exist in the building or in the vault we don't know about in front of it. We'll do one-on-one -on -one property owner meetings and really just try to dive in a little bit more on the specifics of the project versus their property. Um, or sometimes it's um, if we had a particularly high volume or critical um, user there, we'd want to meet with them and, and establish some requirements for construction. Uh, fire station, police station, certainly, city halls, things like that. Um, one of the things that we've actually started doing is on-site studios, um, which really what it is is for us it's a benefit because we c can concentrate our time and, and get a lot done. Um, but the benefit is by this, which is in this instance, we might ask for the use of a room in the community center for two or three days. Um, key design staff would be there all day, those days, and actually doing work, they're designing, they're, they can pop out and go look at something if they need to freshen up the picture in their head, things like that, <laughs> talking to staff because they're so convenient. But what we can also do along the way is um, schedule informal drop-in time. So members of the community, if they're interested, or property owners, it, it works great for that. Um, to just kind of know they can come in whenever with between a one or two hour block time talk to the design team, we've got maps, we, we sketch on paper right on front of them just to make sure we're flushing out ideas. Um, so it, it's very quick, it's quick burn. There's a little bit of planning on our part with staff just to make sure the time's available and, and those folks who might be interested are aware of it. Um, and then the other thing is more traditional public open house, right? So, and again, nowadays a lot of those have gone virtual um, and there's some benefits to virtual, and really it's what you think your community, right, is the most effective way of engagement moving forward, and or hybrid, right? We, we've had to become very flexible, too. So here's, for instance, this is one of, uh, one of our team's prior projects. Um, the kinds of things that we quite often do, and, and to make it very clear, what this agreement has built into it is for RDG to, to come in and do a conceptual design for for four street for that four block section that, and, Omaha? Uh, that one is Omaha okay. um, so come in look at it make sure they understand kind of the character of the neighborhood the businesses things like that but um, then start looking at based on what exists today what your if you have future plans for that block right, that you'd like to change, take those into consideration, and then it start looking at other factors, start coming up with ideas. We come up with a fairly wide range of ideas up front, and then you help, you narrow it down from there. So this is just kind of some of the range of kinds of things that, that RDG 
started to try and help the community decide, right, what is it, what's the direction you think you want to go? And then we look at other things. We certainly look at the, the actual physical space and what's, what are the constraints from a dimensional perspective, right of way, um, but also other infrastructure that we have to um, preserve or maybe even make changes to along the way. And then we start looking at um, some of the other landmark features that help create a place, right? I mean, and, and that's benches, it's landscaping, it's lighting, um, it's gateway features, which can be a, 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 just a tremendous range of choices. We, we have archways and statues and uh, just signs, right, pillars. Um, and then we look at, okay, with, with the space available and the things that the community says they really seem to prefer, then we start coming up with imagery to show you so you can start, you know, it's, it's establishing preferences, it's also establishing budget and what can you afford, what do you, what do you choose to allocate to this project as we go along in terms of these elements. And then what we'll start getting is more specifically within the project, okay, this seems to be what you like and this seems to be the best place to put it. Um, here's an area we haven't, there's opportunity here. You, what do you think's the best use of that? Or do you want to leave it just like it is? Um, and sometimes it's establishing what we're going to do now and then leaving placeholders for what you may choose to do in the future, right? It may be a funding thing. You just need to phase it over time, and that's fine. <laughs> we can help you identify those kinds of um, future investments you may want to make. And we try and set it up to be, make that as easy as possible in the future. So you spend a dollar once, not twice. <coughs> wow, there's the project, sort of. Questions? questions. I have a question. Uh, I heard the positive, the positive points you made with that being uh, what, four lanes or three. What yep. are the negative points to having the three lanes instead of the four lanes going into the downtown area? Right. The, for this one, um, the biggest negative is we certainly want to make sure that the traffic patterns, right, it really is, it does work. Um, and, and we kind of gave you, a, tried to give you a glimpse of, of how we do that in a, a way that's a little more convincing for everybody, right, what to expect, what to change. Um, for these blocks, um, the good thing is there's not a lot of spots between intersections where people make left turns. Um, if there were a lot of spots where the people make left turns, that is sometimes the biggest problem we run into because we need stacking distance. We need people to be able to queue up in line to wait to turn left. Um, but here, in essence, if a lot of people needed to make a, um, a left turn um, southbound to go on to turn onto Delaware, yeah, right, twelve cars for whatever reason. We actually would have almost an entire block available for them to store. Um, so in this setting, some of the risks, the more common risks, I think are, are less likely to be a problem, just given the nature of how 4th Street has built out over time and how the city, once upon a time, didn't let driveways go onto 4th Street, right? They went onto right. the side streets or off the edges. <coughs> so sometimes those are the single biggest risks we run into with the road diet. Okay like that. Um, the other thing is, if in fact you get a situation where there's not a lot of left turns, there just really are a whole bunch of people go, driving through, they're not mm -hmm. turning left, they're not turning right, um, that is the other situation in which, wow, we really do need two lanes in each direction. But based on the traffic volumes, no, one lane would be sufficient mm -hmm. for through traffic in each direction. Yep. Appreciate it. Well, I like the idea of having a wider Echoing here, having a wider sidewalk in certain areas. This right down here, where the pole got hit, there's it's like almost, yeah. you're almost in the street mm -hmm. when you're walking along that, and and it causes being in trucks and cars and everything being that close to the building is what's causing a lot of problems. So, uh, getting the input from the owners of those buildings, I think, is really important for this. So I'm glad you put that in your agenda. Any other? Questions? I have a question. I mean, you've looked, I mean, you haven't, I don't think, drilled down to the extent that you probably will on the um, the road diet option, which is the three lanes and 
the status quo plus or something in terms of four lanes, maybe somewhat enhanced. That'll be part of or one of the essential things that you do in your study, correct? Yeah, that'll be one of the first things we'll do. We actually, just for the interview, right, trying to right. win the project, yeah. we actually went out and did counts sure. at one of the intersections. Sure. Just to make sure we had a, a decent idea of the distribution of traffic, cross traffic, mm -hmm. cross street traffic versus forward. And it was within what we expected. Sure. So, yeah, one of the first tasks we have is to get updated uh, okay. traffic data. And it's really important to us to make sure we pick the right time because we want it to be representative. Sure. Um, at least school's in session. That's a good thing. Summer mm -hmm. can be a, right. a Diff great yeah. cast doubt. Mm -hmm. We've also spent um, about three or four months ago, we completed a pretty comprehensive look at the city's vision and strategy, and we have a 2030 comprehensive land use plan. Did you happen to look at that before uh, your putting in your proposal, or if not, that's fine, but that would be something that I would like you to take a look at because we have a lot of things in there with respect to the downtown. And in the back we have uh, Ms. Wendy Scheidt, and she's the director of Leavenworth Main Street, which, you know, one of the stakeholders, Absolutely. key stakeholder, and I just would want to make sure that you would touch base with Leavenworth Main Street in addition to other stakeholders. Yeah, the principal representing RDG on this project okay. um, did go through Okay. Um, he finds it entertaining reading anyway. Okay. Just <laughs> cities. He just, that's his thing okay. uh, for decades. So he did look through that to okay. look to see if it gave okay. him some clues or cues. Sure. I, I, I felt that yeah. some way probably did based on some of the things you were talking about. But Yeah, that, okay. that, is, that is just good practice. Okay. Okay. Any other no, questions? No. Um, we, we have a duty here to uh, have a motion. Is would somebody be prepared to make a motion? I, um, I move to approve um, approval of the agreement with Brungard, Hano Mitchell and Company in an amount not to exceed $325,331.54 for the engineering and design of 4th Street from Choctaw to Seneca. Funding for the project is available in the Street Capital Project Fund. We need, uh, okay. Process we're looking at KDOT. We have to do a three party agreement. Okay. The GAC, the city, and KDOT. And so KDOT would like uh, the commission to uh, signal their, if, if, if they were agreeable to entering into a three party agreement. Yeah. And so by the night, if you could uh, authorize staff to work with GAC and KDOT yes. to create that three party agreement. Oh, is that? I was going to say, I was looking at the wrong, yeah. Yeah. The wrong sheet. Yeah. Oh, it's right here. Right on the front. Okay. You want to amend right here? Sure. So, what I just have to just, just amend. A motion to a motion, um, move to approve, uh, consider a three party agreement between City, KDOT, and Brengard, Hanna Mitchell, and Company, BHC, for KDOT, K 7 4th Street Improvements Project. Second. Well, point, just quick point of order. Um, consider versus authorize. Do we need the Do we need to term in there authorize? Is it? I think. Yeah. I, and, okay. and the recommendation. I think Commissioner Preisinger may have it. It's on the second page of the policy paper. Um, but I, I could do it if, if need be. It has the words authorize in there, but which I think we need to have in this. Okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. Move that. Like, does, three times a charm. <laughs> move that the city commission. Authorize staff to work with Kate Hutt and BHC to create a three-party agreement for preliminary engineering for the improvements to US 73 from Choctaw Street to Seneca Street. Um, I th think that's what we need. There's, a, there's another sentence, but I don't think we need it in the motion. Okay. That's my motion. A second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting, Commissioner Pressner. Aye. 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 Five to zero, thank you. Thank you Thanks so much, much for coming. Yes, this is thank exciting. You very much. And I'm sorry we butchered the name of your company. I know. <laughs> Where, where's your company uh, headquarters? Is it in Kansas City? Or is uh, yeah, we're in Overland Park. We're at the College of Metcalf. Okay. We're the wreath, uh, Christmas wreath, uh, okay. Royals, right? The building they light up for yeah. 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 Darth Vader uh, building. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Darth Vader yeah, building. Yeah, that was dropping away. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, thank you. We look forward uh -huh. to that. Thank, thank you. you. We need a motion to close the public meeting. So move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting, Commissioner Wilson. Uh, Aye. 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 Just, uh, is this a motion for adjournment? No, to close, to close the public meeting. meeting. Yeah, don't we need a motion? We don't. We, adjourn. This, okay. you know, this would okay, be an well, adjournment no, vote. Yeah, because we don't have, there's no meeting to close. Uh, okay, I thought we were closing I, the public meeting. I thought we were. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Otherwise, we can't. So we're yeah, we can't go around. Let's the go board. around the room. Yeah. Okay, let's not vote on it yet then. <laughs> Withdraw a motion, whoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a couple, <laughs> my bad. Just a couple of <laughs> uh, throughout town, the payment management program is going on. Uh, you'll see it on uh, most noticeably on Broadway. You'll see it on Eisenhower in front of Dillon's. Um, a lot of mill and overlay work, uh, driving around the community, uh, a lot of streets in the downtown. Uh, Camp Leavenworth this weekend, you'll see that the road has been redone um, by the carousel. Um, so thank the public work staff, thank the public for their patience. Uh, mill and overlay goes pretty quickly, uh, but still is a little bit of a disruption. Uh, so I wanted to bring that up. I'm sure somebody's going to uh, mention Camp Leavenworth staff. We'll, we'll be down there a lot of the day, Thursday and Friday, as we start moving in. Notification's been given to... Um, all the residents and businesses down in that area. So uh, we, we are ready. So that's all I have. Okay. Commissioner Price. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Fallis, Mike, these questions will probably be for you guys. Uh, where are all the, there's counters on 4th Street, three or four places. Can you enlighten us? <laughs> yeah, I've seen those too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's associated with the speed study that we're doing on 4th mm -hmm. Street. Okay. Okay, and the next question, I know it's, we're paying 25% of it, Lansing's paying 75% of whatever KDOT's not paying. Tell us what's going on at Fourth and Eisenhower, and why is this, I think it's a uh, utility relocate that's been going on for six, eight weeks, and the traffic there is horrible, and it looks like there's no end to it. They're not even starting any construction. What can you ask? That is a utility uh, issue. It's the Kansas Gas working in there in the area. Uh, they've had some issues with, I think, the tie in the gas service. Yeah, they had to wait on a specialty person to come in and actually make the tie in. So uh, that's why it looked like nobody was working for a day or two. Well, for about or three weeks. weeks. Uh, yeah. It didn't uh, look so like it. They weren't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we actually had the, the outside lane both north and south closed. Uh, we worked with the Lansing to open the, at least the northbound. So both northbound lanes have been open for about a week or so. Uh, but southbound is tough. And people turning uh, south for when they're going east on Eisenhower, even though there's a big no right turn, I see 53-foot trucks, uh, everyone turning south. I think Lansing could make a, a big payday if they just sat there. But uh, So <laughs> when is the, when do you think the utility relocate is going to be complete? Yes, should be. Come on up. Come on up. Because right. <laughs> I, I, I get a lot of – I've had – Four calls gas today on should it. be the last major utility that has to relocate per what the city of Lansing has told us. Okay. And then they're hoping to go out for bid fairly quick. Uh, probably still won't be any construction until 23, but they're – Mike oh, the, So this the utility re relocate is going on now. That will complete in 30 days, within 30 days. I hope so. Okay. Yes, but then goal. the construction of that intersection is not going to go for another 18 months? It depends on if they can get the bid out. No, you, you said I said 23. No, 22. 22. 22. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. I apologize. Okay. 22. I'm a year ahead of myself. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. That's, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Griswold, anything? I've got just two quick things. Is there a ribbon cutting or an opening for the new 7-Eleven store as part of the Fort Gate Metropolitan Avenue development? Uh, Mr. Kramer? Uh, yes, sir. So our best information is that the store will open this Friday mm -hmm. and that the official opening will be October 6th. Um, it's, a, it's an all-day thing. They encourage the community to come out. Casey Wolf will be there. There will be give, uh, lots of giveaways. And somewhere around 11 or 11.30 is when they're going to have the, uh, the ribbon-cutting event. Um, so 6th. exciting. Yeah, it's 11. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. I did have one other thing. Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The, 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 the work that's being done at near the main gate of Fort Leavenworth, I believe it's kind of the relocation or the uh, refabrication of, of 
pipes or uh, natural gas uh, pipes for the prison. Can you just, is that, is that, I just want the sure. public at, at large to know about so that. So for the new prison project, um, the first work that has to happen, it's about a six month process to relocate two interstate gas lines. So those are gases, uh, gas lines that come from Missouri through, through us and, and then onward. Um, the, for the prison project, they're creating a new dedicated easement right of way. So those two gas lines will be moved into that. Following that, the next step is then Evergy coming in and doing all the electrical work associated with uh, the new service. And then following that, um, hopefully, is the award and the start of the construction of the new prison probably sometime early next summer. Thank you. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. No. Just come out to Camp Leavenworth, what, Friday from, what, 5 to 10, and then Saturday is all day, ending up with uh, Melissa Etheridge. So, fun, yep. fun. Camp Leavenworth, I wasn't going to wear my Camp Leavenworth shirt, but uh, it was too small. <laughs> so the new attire will be here Thursday. Yes. Looking forward to seeing the citizens to come out and fellowship, have fun. Uh, this is being sponsored by the city. This is a great time for us to be able to uh, enjoy one another. We had a tough time last year, uh, but today uh, we're going to make it a better year. This upcoming weekend, we're going to make it a better year for the entire community. And great weather. Yeah, great weather. Great weather. And I don't have anything to add to all that. Thank you. Well, that's that. You got to get a shout out. So now I will ask yeah. for a motion to. Uh, Madam Mayor, one, one more thing. Oh, if, yes, if I may ask of you, I know that you just came back from Washington. Can you give us a 45 second to 90 second? <laughs> just tell us who you saw. And it was hot up there. <laughs> <laughs> we had a short conversation with uh, uh, Senator Roger Marshall. And uh, we had a really good conversation with Senator Jerry Moran while we were there. Uh, we went to the Pentagon, and um, th those three were it. We had um, the Department of Justice were going to do a Zoom. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> they were actually, you know, things were pretty well shut down up there yeah. right now. So um, it was difficult to get in, but I, you know, I, I know that I know that Senator Moran was glad to see us. And good. He even put something in his newsletter yesterday. So. Good, good. Um, but uh, it, it's always worthwhile. and. Sure. Uh, you know, he, he did a he did a lot of work to, to try to help us get the prison. Yeah, right. And so um, we kind of recognized him for that. Good. Thank you. Uh, that's it. Okay. Anything else? Do we need to make a motion again or do we already have one on the floor? No. Nope. Just just adjourn. We just adjourn. Yep. Okay. Just adjourn. We're just done. Madam Mayor, <laughs> move that we adjourn. Second. Been moved to second and we're all in favor. Aye. 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 Aye